Let's look at unit 6, which is on arrays. First, let's go over array creation and access. An array is a portion of memory that stores a series of elements. Arrays can be of int, double, string, boolean, or even custom object data types. Here's how a standard array declaration looks like. You have the data type, uh, you have a pair of square brackets, you have the variable name, the equal sign, uh, the keyword new, as we've seen before, uh, with strings, then we have the data type again, uh, square brackets inside of which we put the number of elements we want the array to have. Let's look at uh, a realistic example. So right here we have the declaration and creation of an int array. Here we can see we have the int data type over here and over here. Uh, we have the empty pair of square brackets, the name of the array called vals, the new keyword of course, and then we also have the equal sign. But inside of the square brackets at the end, we have five. What does this tell us? It tells us that vals is an integer array with five elements. Now it's important to note that these five elements have not been initialized. So they're given the default value, uh, and we can refer to this chart again to see what the default value of an int is, which is zero. So there's five elements, all uh, that have the value zero in vals. Uh, and we can look at a property of um, arrays, uh, which is the dot length attribute. So um, this is similar to strings, but we can access the number of elements in an array using the dot length attribute. It's uh, useful to note though, with strings, let's say I have a string s, uh, length uh, is a method, so you'd put uh, parentheses after it, but um, with arrays, it's an attribute, so there are no parentheses. Uh, make sure you don't confuse those two on the FRQ section. Let's look at how another way of initializing an array, this time when you have a predefined set of values. So here we have a string array this time, uh, and you can see we have the string data type. We have the empty pair of square brackets, and then we have the uh, name of the array called names, uh, and the assignment operator, the equal sign. And then we have in curly bra braces, we have a list of string literals, and there's four string literals to be exact. And we basically have already a pre-populated set of data. Uh, and these names include John, Mary, Robert, and Olivia. So you have predefined set of data. You can basically use curly braces and then within these curly braces, you can include your data. Uh, remember though that arrays contain, can only be of uh, one data type. So you can't have a string literal and then have the number zero and then another string literal have the number one. That, that's not how that works. Uh, they have to be of the same data type. Let's look at how you can access the nth element of an array. Uh, this is very useful because uh, let's say you want to access, you know, uh, you have a re registry of names stored in this uh, names array and you basically want to access one of uh, the names in this list and you want to access, let's say, the third name. So to access the third name, what we do is we would take the, the name of the array and then inside square brackets next to it, we'd put the index we'd like minus one. Uh, we've seen this with uh, strings when we wanted to access a specific character. Uh, we do the same thing. So uh, it, it's pretty similar to that. Uh, just know that uh, since it indexes uh, in most programming languages in Java start at zero, uh, you'd count zero, one, two, three. So the third item, Robert, would be at index two. Just a quick tip to remember.